everybody. I have acquired some books and I would love to share them with you. So that's what we're going to do today. So I will preface this by saying that this is the second time I have filmed this. I have a camera that I've never really utilized and so I've been kind of trying to learn and film with that and it's much better quality obviously than filming on your phone. And for some reason the video is not uploading um, and I don't know why there's an error and I have no one to ask. And I can't tell you how maddening that is. So I'm kicking it back to my original way just for the ease of this. I have a bunch of books and that's all we really care about and I can't wait to show you guys. There's a good mix of fiction, nonfiction, some classics thrown in there. Um, and I had a gift card so some of them are new but a lot of them are just some thrift store finds and we'll just get into it. So the first one on this big wobbly stack in front of me um, is Empress, Empress Dowager Sichi by Young Chang and I have recently read Wild Swans. I absolutely loved it. There's just an ease in reading it. It's an autobiography of three generations um, and I learned so much of China's history and I realized there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge and I would like to fill that. So I really enjoyed her writing and this is also, both of those were recommendations from Sophie from Redhead Reading. So I'm really excited to get into this. I really like this cover as well. It's a good, thick, like well-made feeling book. I can't wait to flip through it. It's kind of floppy. I like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, next on the pile here is Brood uh, by Jackie Polzin. I have been humming and hawing at this. I had put it in a video about like upcoming releases at one point and I couldn't find it and my library never got it in stock so I finally decided okay that's one I want to purchase. I just really like memoir, well it's a memoir first of all, but I like them in rural country settings and that's what I believe this is. It's a lady who owns four chickens and it's sort of her journey, her tumultuous journey in raising these chickens, all of the fun parts and then all of the woes that come along with it. So predators and bad luck it says on the back, but it says it's a dark, darkly witty, deeply moving and startlingly original debut novel of motherhood, grief, full of sorrow, joy and unrelenting hope. And I adore the cover on that as well. Um, so yeah, I was happy to get my hands on that and support a local bookshop as well. Another one that I had been eyeing for a long time uh, is Dress Codes and this is How the Laws of Fashion Made History by Richard Thompson Ford and I believe it was Mara from Books Like Whoa that first read this and it sparked my interest and it spans a long period of time. First of all, I like like just observing fashion throughout time when you go to museums. Um, this goes all the way from I believe medieval times to present day. Um, let me just see. Oh, yeah, Middle Ages to present day, a walk down history's red carpet to uncover, examine the canons, mores, and customs of clothing, rules that we often take for granted. So she said it was just really well done, and yeah, I'm really interested in that. And there's a tiny <laughs> photo at the back. Yeah, it's quite scandalous from front to back. You can see how times evolved, but he's quite spiffily dressed on there as well. And then the fourth book. I decided to get because I usually purchase a lot of nonfiction or classics when I'm paying full price but I threw in just a fun random one and that is Goldilocks by Laura Lamb. I heard about this on Acacia Ives channel and I really like dystopian books for fall so I thought maybe it would be kind of a perfect time to read it and this also seems to be like a feminist sci-fi thriller and it just says, um, despite increasing restrictions on the freedoms of women on earth, Valerie Black, which is my mom's name, uh, we call her Ada, but her name's Valerie, <laughs> is, a spe is spearheading the first of all female missions to a planet in the Goldilocks zone where conditions are just right for human habitation. And humanity's last hope for survival, but when, it's humanity's last hope for survival, but when things start going wrong, on the ship, the crew begin to suspect that someone on board is concealing a terrible secret and realize time for life on Earth may be running out faster than they feared. So I like books like that around fall season, a good dystopian find. The next one I found at a thrift shop and I didn't realize when I was doing my October video that I could have technically included this, but I, I didn't even realize it was in there anymore. So. I usually let my pile accumulate on the side before I do a book haul video. So this, these are purchases over a long span of time. Um, this is Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens and it is brand new. Like it doesn't sound like anyone's opened it. 
the receipt from their purchase is still in there. Spine has not been cracked. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to own such a good quality copy and only pay, I only paid maybe like $2 for that. So that was an exciting one. This next book I actually knew based on a different cover. So I'll pop a picture of that cover up here. But this is Africaville by Jeffrey Colvin. And uh, one of my friends on Instagram actually read this and said it was really good. And from what I understand, it's a generational saga. Um, going back, I believe, early 1900s until present day. And, oh no, late late 18th century, sorry. Um, and it takes place in Halifax, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from me, like about a two hour drive. And it says, um, it's settlers hail from Haiti, Trinidad, and American South and include Jamaican rebels exiled by their British masters. By the turn of the century, Africa, Africaville is vibrant, hard scrabble community, home to hardworking families like the Seabolts and their daughter, Cathella. And it just sort of follows her through time. But it says it's vibrant and compelling um, and a landmark from a ferociously talented writer. So I've never read anything by him, but a nice hardcover copy. Amazing. And then just really quickly, I had picked this up actually before um, Hilary Mantel just passed, which is really sad. Um, but I wanted to complete the trilogy. I started reading Wolf Hall at one point and just felt like there are a lot of names and there's a lot of history that I am not as familiar with. So I really wanted to work and have been working hard at um, understanding the Tudor period better so that when I can read these, I can get the most out of them. Um, so I'm happy to complete the trilogy and then when I feel confident enough to start it, I will. Um, and then I visited my local bookshop. It's called Tidewater Books in Sackville, um, which is just a village or a city over, I don't know, I think it's a town actually. Um, but yeah, this is The Sound of Fire by Renee Bellevue. And I went in, the cover is really interesting. There's lots of detail on there if you can see it. Uh, I went into the shop and I love doing this in independent bookshops, just going up to a bookseller and asking for a recommendation. Sometimes they'll ask like probing questions about what genre or what do you read or what are your interests, but I love it when they just are passionate about something and they talk it up to a level that I immediately buy it. And that's what happened with this. She picked out two and this is the one that I chose and it takes place in Sackville, so the town where the shop is located. And it has to do with a fire that happened at Mount Allison University located there. And it sort of um, is told at a blistering pace in multiple points of view, including characters based on Alex and Rhoda Colville, who were actually students at the time of the fire, as well as faculty and staff, students past and present, a local journalist, and the suspicious town people, townspeople. This stunning work of historical fiction explores themes of trauma, love, and humanity in the face of tragedy. So not only am I getting to read a historical fiction based on something true that happened really close by me, I'm supporting a local author. So I thought that was cool. So this next one is actually, it's getting kind of dark out by the way. I'll just tell you there's a massive storm kind of coming in. The wind is really loud and we're supposed to get 20 millimeters of rain in a really short time span. So <laughs> I'm just watching the sky just change out there. Um, this next one I found at an antique shop and that's what I kind of do is I go and I look for older editions that are in good shape. This one passed the smell test. It's at the level of like comforting old book, not like ugh, old book, you know? <laughs> um, but this is Marianne by Daphne du Maurier. I hadn't heard of this one. I, I've just basically probably heard of her main ones, like my cousin, Rachel, Rebecca, those sorts. Um, but my other edition that I found, a first edition of stor a short story collection of hers in Scotland. So I'm gonna just sort of build a little collection, I think, um, as time goes on. But this is about a woman who sounds like she has a very poor upbringing and then she was, um, there was lots of advances from gentlemen. So she just decided to marry really early, but her husband is completely worthless and she ends up leaving him, but she's got four children to take care of and she becomes a courtesan maybe? I'm not sure. It sounds a little scandalous. Who knows? <laughs> um, oh, and I want to show you what she looks like on the back. I just love that photo of her. Uh, then a recommendation from Alex from Big All Books. This is Serious Blooms at Night by Shani Mutu. And I never would have heard of this. I, yeah, I, I don't even know when it was actually published. How long ago? 
Um, 96, yeah, so I probably wouldn't have come across this. And she just recently did a comeback video and it was all of her summer book recommendations. So she picked ones that specifically had like summer themes and summer feelings. And um, so I'm really excited to get into this one. It, uh, it says it's set in the fictional Caribbean town of paradise. So I get why now. It unveils the mystery surrounding Mala, an aging, notoriously crazy woman suspected of murdering her father. When a judge finds out Mala is unfit to stand trial, she is delivered frail and mute to the Paradise Alms House and placed in the care of Tyler, a vivacious male nurse who be becomes her unlikely confidant and the storyteller of Mala's extraordinary and tempestuous life. So interesting. And actually these flowers are serious cacti flowers. I used to order these from my work and they, they do bloom at night. We'd always get them shipped obviously in the dark because they were boxed up. And then when we unpack them, their blooms would open or we would go home in the evening, but come back in the morning and one of the cacti would bloom. And they almost, they just last like 24 hours and then they're, they drop. So they're really pretty. <laughs> Um, I also have a thing for Europa editions at thrift shops. Like as soon as I come across one, it's kind of like a Persephone book. You get a bit excited. <laughs> and this is A Day in the Life in, of Ancient Rome by Alberto Angela. So another awesome photograph on the cover there or a painting. Um, this one is takes place in 24 hours beginning on the dawn of an ordinary day in the year 115 CE with Imperial Rome at the height of its power. The reader wakes in a rich patrician home and discovers frescoes, opulent furnishings, and richly appointed boudoirs. So I think that sounds really neat to me. Um, I like books that just, you know, are kind of a concentrated everything you would see and everything you would smell strolling through the streets and day in the life of Rome. Um, then uh, there's actually like a pediatric facility in town from me and they were having a book sale and most of the books were in French because this is an Acadian village and French is the primary language. But one of the only English speaking books that was there um, that I wanted to support them with was Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. I was happy to find this. I remember, I think Simon from Savage Reads talking about it quite a bit. And again, this is one that has not been read and their book depository um, bookmark is still in it, which is neat because that means someone else in this village orders from book depository and maybe they can be my friend. <laughs> um, but that's what booktubes were. I literally know nobody who avidly reads in my life. That's why I say that. Um, then I found The Wives of Henry VIII uh, by Antonia Fraser. I've not only heard good things about her, but I tend to pick up Tudor books, like I mentioned before, I'm trying to learn a lot about that period. And it's interesting going from different authors because they have a different take or they interpret things a little bit differently. So I just, I love those little nuances when you're reading different nonfictions on the same topic. Um, but yeah, this is only 400 and some odd pages and encompassing all the wives. So I don't expect it to get into too much detail, but yeah, there is that one. And then I had briefly shown the first two copies of these in another video when they came in the mail, but I've got all three now. Um, this is Sigrid Unset's trilogy and it is called Cri the Christian, now I practiced this and I'm still gonna butcher it, Lavrin Statter. Um, it's The Wreath, The Wife, and The Cross, uh, books one, two, and three. You can buy a, a, like a full bind up by Penguin that's all in one volume, but uh, my, Boyfriend actually ordered these for me because a recommendation from a subscriber got me all excited and he overheard. Um, it was from Margaret and these two came in last time. As you can see, they're brand new Penguin <laughs> editions and he didn't realize that he ordered me a used copy. So I'm sure that this probably gets everyone's OCD going crazy because they don't match, but I didn't have the heart to tell him. I actually would just hit it and said thank you. Uh, I felt so bad and he would have felt bad and he, I didn't want him to return it or anything like that. So, and we're on to the final book of this book haul. Um, this is one that everybody's seen around. This is The Flat Chair by Bethel Weary. I don't read a lot of romance, but when I do, I want to read it with good writing and a bit of intellect, not too tropey. Like, I don't know. I've heard good things about her writing on two of her books. 
I'm not entirely sure how many she's even written. Um, but I heard there's like an intelligent side to this romance and that really appeals to me and everything is really purposefully done so and tastefully done. So excited to own that for just something lighter. Let me know if you've purchased anything interesting lately, if some of these sound really good to you that you want me to prioritize over others, or even how is your Victober reading going? I'm doing pretty good actually. I finished North and South and I'm in the middle of Vanity Fair and loving it, which I didn't think because it is quite large and I, my, a couple of my friends have said they picked it up a few times and put it down and I am really enjoying it. So that's it for today. I think I'll do a recent reads soon because the book pile is accumulating and I don't want to forget everything about them. But anyways, I hope you guys are all well and I will talk to you soon. Bye.